Hello everyone, you're welcome. It's the Maths A Levels AQA Paper 1. This is a new specimen, well it's a new spec and this is the first time it's going to be sat for. 2018. Well this is the specimen material and we shall be looking at the solutions right now. So first of all, you want to read all the instructions in the form page, on the form page, and you want to fill in your details in black ink as requested. So I'm just going to enter my section, my center number, candidate number. Yeah, it's meant to be clear. Right, I know that doesn't look nice, but you all know I'm faking this, right? The surname, okay, now that has to be well written because it doesn't matter how many marks you get if your name is not clear. Uh, what have I done now? All right, just forget that, okay? And of course, the most popular thing signature, right. So we've got two hours to solve this very easy question, easy peasy, and so let's go, shall we? Question one says, find the gradient of the line with equation 2x plus 5y equals 7. Well, I'm not really happy with the way this equation has been written. I would like to write it in the form that I am used to, which is that form. So, what can I do to make y the subject? First and foremost, get 2x to the other side. So that becomes 5y equals negative 2x plus 7. Now that we have 2x on the other side, can we get rid of 5, which is multiplying y? The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So the 5 is used to divide both sides and that leaves you with a y there and a minus 2 over 5x plus 7 over 5. The gradient is whatever you have in front of x and as you can see m there is replaced by negative 2 over 5 and this is therefore my answer. Okay, question 2. A curve has equation y equals 2 over root x. Find the y dx. When you see a problem like this, the first thing you want to do is to rewrite this in the form we are used to, which is the indices form. So rather than write y equals 2 over root x, I'm going to write y equals 2 over x to the power half. And rather than put the x to the power half at the bottom, I would like to bring that to the top, so it goes to y equals 2x to the... Now, because I'm bringing that to the top, it takes a negative power, so negative a half. You're told to find the dy dx of something that looks like a polynomial. We all know that what you need to do is to multiply by the power and take away 1 from the power. So when you multiply by the power, it becomes negative a half times 2x I take away 1 from that power so the new power is negative a half minus 1 of course negative a half times 2 gives you negative and then you have x to the power negative a half negative 1 that's negative 3 over 2 now another way of writing this is negative is 1 over, sorry, sorry, I haven't got enough room there, so it's 1 over x to the power 3 over 2. Now there's a negative there. So it has to be either this or that. We do not have a 2 in our answer, so it cannot be this. It has to be that. But you may be wondering, how is this the same as that? If what you have here is x root 2, how is it the same as x to the power 3 root 2? That is because x to the power 3 root 2 is the same thing as x to the power 
1 x to the power a half. Okay. Because when you add 1 and a half, you get that. So we're fine. Okay. Uh, there you go. There. So that's correct. Now, let's look at another question. Question. The next question is question 3. Alright. Uh, one second. There we go. When theta is small, find an approximation for cos 3 theta plus theta sine 2 theta. Now, I could go on and on in trying to explain to you how to solve questions like that. But I want you to be fast in the exam, so I am going to take you straight to the formula booklet that tells you exactly what to do. So if you look at the formula sheet, you see that, well, first and foremost, in the question, it says find an approximation. That means you don't have to be exactly correct. The formula sheet has told us something about approximating trig um, functions. So it says sine theta can easily be approximated as theta, while cos theta can easily be replaced as 1 minus theta squared over 2. So that's from the formula sheet on page 4, so you might want to make good use of the formula sheet. So using that knowledge, we would go ahead to say cos theta it's approximately 1 minus theta squared over 2. Therefore, cos 3 theta will be approximately 1 minus... Now, whatever was theta would be squared, and you divide by 2. But rather than having theta here, what I have is 3 theta, so that's 3 theta. If it had been anything else, it would also be squared, so that's fine. Now, that gives you 1 minus... 9 theta squared over 2. How about sine um, theta sine 2 theta? Well, sine 2 theta, we all know from what we've just seen that sine theta is approximately theta. That's from the formula sheet. So sine 2 theta is also approximately 2 theta. So whatever that angle is, is what it is. Okay, and therefore, Throwing all of that into the function tells us that cos 3 theta plus theta sine 2 theta is going to be equal to 1 minus 9 over 2, uh, so 1 minus 9 over 2 theta squared plus theta times 2 theta. So, if we bring all that together, it becomes 1. Now, that's 2 theta squared, and that's negative 4.5. So, that's minus 2.5 theta squared. Or you can just call it 1 minus 5 over 2 theta squared. And that is the answer. So, we've been able to write that in the form that they wanted us to write it as. Looking at the next question, question 4. Um, it says p of x equals 2 to 2x to the power of 3 plus 7x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we are told to use the factor theorem to prove that x plus 3 is a factor. Well, if you are to use formula theorem, the, the factor theorem, then that's really straightforward because the factor theorem says, for example, that if f of x equals something and f of minus 2 gives you when you sub 2 into where when you sub minus 2 into where x was if that gives you a 0 then that means x plus 2 is a factor so if that's what the factor theorem says then how about we just use this in the question we have and see if p of x, when x is negative 3, would give us 0. So, p of x from the question is 2x to the 3 plus 7x squared 
plus 2x take away 3. Now, when we try p of negative 3, and we've used negative 3 because this is x plus 3. If that was x minus 3, we would use positive 3. So we go in the opposite of whatever is there. In actual fact, what we do is that we say x plus 3 equals 0, so x is negative 3. And that's what we are, we're playing with here. If that had been 2x plus 3, then we would have x equals negative 3 over 2. So we can try this in, on our calculators to see if it's going to give us 0. But it should, right? So we can diligently put that in our calculator to see what the answer would be. Um, 2 into negative 3 all cube. I'll get my answer for that. And I'll add that to 7 times 3 well, times negative 3 squared negative 3 squared I got my answer and I'll add that to 2 times negative 3 and I'll take away 3 and that gives 0 so we are happy with that answer aren't we? so this gives 0 therefore proven okay okay um, the next question is question 4 B and it takes on from the one we've just answered it says that simplify the expression so it's it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an algebraic fraction that we have to simplify but when you are told to do something like that, you want to be able to factorize the numerator and the denominator. How can you factorize a three-degree polynomial? You need to have known one of the factors. And good for us, we now know one of the factors. So to factorize the numerator, we will try to use long division. Uh, 2x to the 3 plus 7x squared plus 2x minus 3 and outside we have the factor we already know we want to see what the other factor would be how many x go into x cubed it's 2x squared 2x squared ok that's not clear one second 2x squared and that gives you 2x cubed and when you multiply 2x squared by 3 as well you get 6x squared in the usual tradition we subtract so that gives you 0 and that gives you x squared brings down to 2x minus 3 how many x go in x squared is just 1 so it's plus x x times x is x squared x times 3 is 3x and then you subtract again 2x minus 3x is negative x and then you have negative 3 how many x go in negative x is negative 1 because negative x divided by negative divided by x is just negative 1 and when you multiply you get exactly this so when you subtract you get 0 that showed that it was truly a factor but the other factor is 2x squared plus x minus 1. It's not enough to have it this way. You want to be able to factorize that. So, 2x squared plus x minus 1 is the same thing as... Now, factorizing quadratics should be something that every A-level student can do very quickly. And that's because there are so many tricks nowadays in having in, in factorizing quadratics especially funny ones like this that have coefficients in front of x squared so many people have their own method I'll just tell you what my method is I'm about to I'm going to use a pencil now I'm about to find out what two numbers multiply to give negative 2 but 
and add up to give 1. And how do I get negative 2? Because I'll write M A M. So MAM, right? So they need to multiply to give whatever these two multiply to give. And they need to add to give whatever this one wants, which is 1. So two numbers are multiply to give negative 2 and add up to give 1. And of course, it has to be 2 and negative 1. OK. So I know that this is going to be 2 and negative 1. But where does the 2x go? Do I have 2x here and x there? Or do I have x here and 2x there? So I am going to write 2x on both sides, pretending that I don't know where the actual 2x should be. Now, you obviously can see that this is not correct because this is going to multiply to give 4x squared. One of the 2x here has to go down to x. Which one is it going to be? Well, you answer the question, which one can you factorize? Can you factorize anything here? No. Can you factorize anything here? Yes. What's common to them? 2? Yes. 2 can go out of there. But the trick is this. Whatever goes out never comes back in. If this 2 is factored out, it's not coming back, okay? So, when the 2 is factored out, what do you have left in the bracket? x plus 1. So, that leaves you with the final result. And that one stays there because we didn't factorize it. So, we're going to ignore that. Normally, I'll use my eraser to rub this off and have it like this. So, x plus 1, 2x minus 1. There are so many tricks, I have just decided to use this one. So you can see what I could use. In the next um, video, we're going to continue with question 5 and move on till the end of this. Thank you for paying attention. Bye.